The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable communications industry and your local cable company. Now let's join four-time Olympic gold medalist Janet Evans and dive into drag with Marissa Copeland. Hey, Janet. Hey. Look, we picked up some new sponsorships. Oh, great. Yeah, every little bit helps. Thank you. So you just have to wear this during the okay, race. No, no problem. Okay. Oh, it looks good. Good. Yeah. Okay. And try those on. These two? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Okay. Look what I got for you. Oh, I don't know about this. They paid us the most. This just attaches to your ankle. Okay. Here we go. Let's get training. What? We got to talk. Put your brain in the game. Oh. If you've ever tried to pull something while you're swimming, you know how much of a drag it can be. In a race, a swimmer's biggest enemy isn't the other swimmers, it's drag. So what is drag? Uh, uh, and how can we beat it? Uh. She's pretty good at overcoming drag. That's Janet Evans. She's swum in three Olympics. She's won four gold medals. And she still holds the world records in the 400, the 800, and the 1500 meter freestyle. She's volunteered her time today to talk with us about swimming and drag. Janet, drag is a big part of swimming, right? That's right. It's one of the two main things a swimmer is concerned about. There's propulsion, which is pushing you through the water, and then there's drag, which is slowing you down. So learning about drag can make you a better swimmer, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Anytime an object moves through a gas, like air, or a liquid like water, and it experiences resistance, we call that drag. Drag is a force that directly opposes an object's velocity. This is drag! Because I'm pushing this way, but the water's pushing against me. Now if I turn and go that way, this is a drag! Both gases and liquids work the same when it comes to drag. In fact, for scientists, gases and liquids are both fluids. We usually think of water as a fluid, but gases like air are fluids too. And solids are solid, right? Solid. But fluids move easily when you move them. Fluids also take the shape of the container that they're in. And because Water and air are so similar, objects moving through them are subject to the same effects. And one of these effects is drag. But you know, it's easier to move your hand through the air than it is through the water. And the difference is called viscosity. Besides viscosity, the other thing that determines drag force is the shape of the object. Obviously, this shape is going to have a lot of drag. Now, the final element of drag force velocity, how fast an object is passing through a fluid. Now this is a relative velocity, because I'm hardly moving at all, but the water's flow velocity is very high. Now if I turn and swim this way, whoo, I'm traveling really fast, but the relative velocity of the water's flow against me is really pretty slow, because I'm traveling with it. So obviously not a lot of drag force. So far, it's all pretty obvious, right? Right. Moving through a thicker fluid is going to increase drag. And certain shapes will have more drag than others. And the faster you go, the higher the drag force. OK, we got the basics of drag. But in order to understand how a swimmer can overcome drag, we have to understand how drag works on a body as it moves through the water. There are OK, there are three different types of drag that affect the swimmer. Which are? Viscous, viscous drag. drag, wave drag, and form drag. OK, let's start with viscous drag. Why swimmers don't wear business suits. 
viscous drag can also be called frictional drag or surface drag because it's the fluid's interaction with the surface of the object that creates the drag. What happens with viscous drag is that the water that comes into contact with the swimmer's surface area sticks to the swimmer, so it can't flow as quickly past. This forms a boundary layer of water that the swimmer drags along with him. This layer then interacts with the more quickly passing water outside the boundary layer, resulting in a force something like friction. The smoother the swimmer surface can be made, the less water will be dragged along in the boundary layer. This business suit is increasing viscous drag two ways, by presenting a rougher surface and by presenting more surface area. Watch. See how much slower I was? This is why business people don't win swim events. Now, what about form drag? Well, when you're swimming slowly, you're experiencing viscous drag, and that's when the water flows smoothly all across your body. But as you start to speed up, you start to experience form drag. The boundary layer follows the contour of the swimmer's body. This is called laminar, or streamlined flow. But look what happens when she starts to swim faster. Water doesn't have a very high viscosity. It's not that sticky. So as the speed increases, the boundary layer separates from the surface. The separation of the boundary layer causes an area of turbulence behind the swimmer back here. This is called partially turbulent flow. It's just like in a boat. Going real slow, there's no discernible wake. The water wraps smoothly around the surface. But as the boat speeds up, the water can't hug the sides and we get a wake behind it. This turbulent wake here is an area of low pressure. The water in front of the boat is now at a relatively higher pressure than the water in the back of the boat. In physics, we know that areas of high pressure exert a force toward areas of low pressure. The same thing is happening with the swimmer. The area of higher pressure in front is exerting a force in the direction of the low pressure. It's directly against the direction of her movement, so it's a drag force, and it's called form drag. So we've got viscous drag and form drag both working against you. Yeah, but neither of these are the biggest drag on your body. The most significant drag force comes from wave drag. Here's the thing about wave drag. When a swimmer is swimming at top speed, it's the hardest drag force for a swimmer to overcome. It's even harder than viscous drag or form drag. But where are the waves? Look what happens as a swimmer takes her stroke. See the waves that come off her head, arms, and chest? Look how she plows into that same wave as her next stroke brings her forward. Encountering those waves produces a force against the direction the swimmer is going. Wave drag. OK, so now we know all the forms of drag that are slowing Janet down. Now, what good does that do us? Well, understanding what slows you down is how you overcome those obstacles and are able to swim faster. And the swimmers that know how to do this are the swimmers that are going to be winners. OK, let's start with viscous drag. How do we overcome that? Well, you can never really overcome viscous drag, but there are things you can do to lessen its effects. The suits we wear are tight-fitting and are made of special fabric, so they offer as little resistance to the water as possible. Hair is another place swimmers can cut down on viscous drag. A lot of male swimmers shave their heads, and women always wear bathing caps to present the smoothest surface possible to the water. What about form drag? Well, the tight-fitting suits help lower form drag, but the main thing we do to overcome that is to try to keep our bodies in as streamlined a shape as possible. When we make our turns and push off the wall, you can see that we try to position our bodies so they slice through the water. This is to try and keep from making too big a wake and creating the low pressure that goes with it. We also keep our arms in close to our bodies and spend a lot of time refining how we bring our arms forward. Don't forget, even your hand coming forward in the water can create its own wake and its own form drag. So the last kind of drag, and the biggest, is wave drag. Now, how do you lessen its effects? Well, there's lots of ways to lessen wave drag. One of the main ways is through these lane lines here. And a lot of people think that swimmers use lane lines so we stay straight and we don't run into each other when we're swimming. But actually, these lane lines break the waves that are coming off the swimmer's body. So when you're swimming, the waves don't go down to the next lane. Mm -hmm. Another way is through the design of the swimming pool. And as you can see, this pool has gutters. So when the waves that do make it to the edge of the pool, they go into the gutter and they don't bounce off the wall and come back to bother the swimmers. OK, so now you're not swimming through other people's waves. Right. But what about the waves that you create? Well, the best way to combat those is to streamline and swim underwater as long as you can. And that way, you're not swimming in your own waves. OK, guys, so what did we learn? that any object falling to a fluid encounters resistance, and that is called drag. And there are different kinds of drag. 
A swimmer is up against viscous drag, form drag, and wave drag. Viscous drag is the resistance of the fluid that comes in contact with the surface, so it is sometimes called surface drag. Form drag is caused by a difference in pressure when there's a turbulent wave, so sometimes it's called pressure drag. Wave drag is from the waves created by swimmers as they swim. I'm Reese Davis. We want to thank today's athletes for donating their time to put your brain in the game. Join us again for ESPN Sports Figures. ESPN Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to tape and use in the classroom. For a free teacher's curriculum, to order the Sports Figures series, or if you have questions or comments, visit our website at ESPNSportsFigures.com. You can also call 1-800-565-0452. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Sports, sports Figures, put, put your, your brain, brain in the, the game. game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company.